Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this day. This day to look in your word together, to worship and honor you, and to remember that precious day when the hope for mankind was sent to earth, when your son Jesus was born. And we thank you for bringing us together today, and we ask that you would teach us and instruct us and that you would take your word and that it would be applied to our hearts and lives and that through it all we could honor and worship you and live for you, for your kingdom and your glory. And we ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. We're going to be in Luke chapter 1 and we're going to look at a few of the the characters that are associated with the Christmas story. And the first one we're going to really focus on is going to be Mary. And when I was thinking through about the Christmas season and about the different people early on involved in the birth of Christ and, and of that time frame, I just couldn't help but thinking of this this concept, this message about living life with hope. And I saw these people that needed to live life with hope because they would have to endure some hard things or they would have to wait a long time to see the fulfillment of certain promises. And to see people that traveled through life with only a, a, a little bit of understanding, yet we're staying faithful to God, it encourages me because God has given us so much so that we would journey through life and be faithful to the end. And that hope, having that hope in Christ is so important, so needed. And I, I don't know what the world does that doesn't have hope in the Lord. When hard times hit, and they hit us all, what are they reaching for? What are they holding on to? What are they, they grabbing a hold of? And the hope in Christ and the faith he's given us is such a a beautiful thing to have. And so we're going to begin in chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 26 and then move through some of the scriptures here. It starts out this way. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Right there in that opening statement, we see that God, as you know the story, is going to reach a young woman, a a, a very young uh, maiden, or, you know, unmarried woman, betrothed but unmarried. And he's going to minister to her, and he's going to encourage her, and he sends word to her. And he sends it through his angel, Gabriel. I mean, Gabriel, mighty angel of God, messenger of God, delivering his word to his people. And here he sends this message to her, to a virgin, espoused to be a man, or to a man, whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. She's like, What's going on? What, what's, what's happening? I'm blessed by God. I, an angel shows up. 
but yet I'm troubled. I, I don't understand yet of why this appearance. And it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now that is wonderful news. That God was stepping into the world and fulfilling a promise to mankind. Stepping into the world and offering mankind hope and salvation and forgiveness of sin. And here God saw this young girl, Mary, young woman, and said to her, Fear not, you are highly favored by God. And you're going to bring forth the, a son, the Messiah, the Savior. And then said Mary unto the angel, how should this be, seeing I know not a man? I, I've, I'm not formally married. I've never been with a man in that way. How is this going to happen? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And I could imagine a, a, a young woman's and her mind's racing, like, what does this mean? How, how is this going to look? What are people going to say? And, and thinking, no, 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 no. No, that's okay. I, I, I know it's supposed to be a blessing. I know it's supposed to be a great honor. But, but can I just kind of live like everyone else? Can, can, can I just, you know, be like everyone else? I mean, what are people going to think? What, what are people going to say? They're going to think all kinds of evil of me. And, and they'll never understand me. They'll never understand if I try to say, no, no, I've never been with a man, but, but the Holy Spirit brought this conception within my womb. They won't understand. The, the, I don't know how I'm going to... What's Joseph going to think? What's Joseph going to say? W will he ever believe me that I've been faithful to him? Boy, this is going to be a hard life. It's going to be a difficult task to, to follow. People are going to think evil of me. They're going to be whispering about me. And yet none of it's true of the things they'll say. How, how am I going to ever defend myself if I try to tell them what truly happened, they'll think I'm crazy. They won't get it. They won't understand. This is going to be very difficult. A accepting this, this Son of God, this, this Savior to mankind, and, and, and receiving it as a, a gift from God, it's going to be hard to, to live that kind of life out. It's going to be difficult because people are going to mock me. They're going to come against me. They're going to reject me. They're going to, they're going to speak all manner of evil against me. 
I, I, I'm not sure of this. And yet, I believe Mary needed to remind herself of what God thinks of her, not what man thinks. Not what, what mankind says for, for her believing in the truth of God, embracing what God has for her, and then following him with her whole heart regardless of the pressure and the, and the, and the situation around her and the attacks and, and the discouragement and the people that are going to mock her. I, I, she had to be able to embrace something in her heart that's going to keep her persevering and going forward in what God has for her. And she may be thinking, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what did the angel say? What, what did he say to me? What, what was his word from God? I know he said, Hail, thou art highly favored. And, and she had to hold on to that. I am highly favored of God. The Lord is with thee. He's going to never leave me. That, that word hail and highly favored has a wonderful meaning. It means basically this. Be well with you who are pursued with the grace, surrounded by his favor, and honored with his blessings. When you break that phrase down, it has all of that attached to it. And she needed to embrace that, God's blessing me. This is a gift from God. This is a blessing of God. And yes, as I embrace this gift of his son, it may mean a difficult life ahead. It may mean hard choices and difficult situations. It may mean rejection from others. But it's a blessing. And it's God's favor upon me. And I thought, how often do we need to remind ourselves of that? That the gift you've been given in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is a gift from God. It's a blessing from God. Oh, there may be an attachment from, from because of this world where there is attacks and belittlements and misunderstandings about your character and gossips and other things. You may find a difficult road ahead as you try to live your life for Christ. But you've got to remember that you are blessed by God. To remember you are his beloved. To hold on to the fact that above all others, God has favor upon me. Not that he's a respecter of persons. I'm just saying that above you know, what I see in the world, for those that don't have the Lord, I have his blessings. I have the favor of God. And that's a richness and, and, a, and a tenderness and a joy that no one can take away. And so he says, Mary, you are highly favored of the Lord. And more than that, the Lord is with you. The, the Lord is with you. And we have that promise too. He's with us. He, he didn't give Mary his son and place his son in her womb with all the stigmatism that would surround it being not knowing a man truly at this time not being truly married to, to Joseph in that way but he gave her the gift and he said and I'm going to go along with you in the journey I'm going to be with you and then it says that the Lord is with thee, and blessed art thou among women. You know, when I see what's going on in people's lives, and sometimes over the years, i got to tell you, I wonder, Lord, why can't I have those things? Why, why does it seem like 
these people don't have any difficulties at all, and I'm attacked constantly. What, Lord, I, I don't get it. And yet she had to hold on to the fact that the Lord had declared to her that thou art blessed. Lord, I have more richness and more wealth in my life because I have you than anyone else. And this is the hope that, that Mary was able to hang on to when she journeyed life knowing that it would be hard and difficult, but nevertheless, it would be most favored and blessed. And, and even after she gave birth, there was still a hard journey ahead for Mary, a hard road to, to travel, especially as her son got older and, and he went forward in the ministry and the calling and the, and the work that he came to do. And then at the cross, and then at the persecutions that would follow the believers in Christ, but yet she knew, God is with me. I am a blessed person. And so it goes on. And the angel said to her, Behold thy cousin, in verse 36, Elizabeth, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. And there are times that God will step into my life in those moments and remind me there's others going through what you're going through. There's others experiencing the miraculous hand of God in their life. And though it might not have happened in their culture, but in our culture, it could happen. I mean, you know, you have a child later on and, and you think that's a blessing and a people are like, really, at your age? Kathy and I know what we're talking about. Dustin was born later in life. We fought for them during baseball games to not say to Dustin, oh, it's so nice your grandparents are with you. <laughs> so, but you experience others that are going through things and seeing the mighty hand of God and praise the Lord for the Elizabeths in your life. The people that you can relate to and hang with and be encouraged by. And God said, let me tell you something. Elizabeth also was touched. The one who was called barren, she's having a son. Be encouraged, Mary. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And I want to hold on to that truth over and over. Because I'm going to face some things that I know as a fact are impossible. But that's without God. But with God, all things are possible. And I can trust him in those things. And I can look to him in those things. And I can have hope in those things. Because you and I have been given a gift of hope in his son Jesus Christ. We've been given that gift. And so with God, all things are possible. And Mary said, look at Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. And this phrase just slayed me. Be it unto me according to thy word. And God said it would do you good to repeat that. Be it unto me, Lord, according to thy word. Because it doesn't matter the difficulty. It doesn't matter the hardness. It doesn't matter the, the, the mocking and the accusations. It doesn't matter the ridicule and everything else. It doesn't matter. What matters is you are with me and I want to be with you. 
And I want to be true to your word. Be it unto me, Lord, as you see fit. And this was probably not Mary's plan, although the people always wanted the Messiah. I mean, that was a dream of the ladies to give birth, but I don't think they understood how it would happen. And so this this Holy Spirit coming upon them, a miraculous and mighty thing, would would leave a little bit of, of shame among others that didn't understand. And for her to just say, then so be it. Whatever you have declared, let it be done. And when you're facing a hard time and it's something God has put in your path, know that God is with you. And you have a hope inside you to move through those things, but surrender to God's will. And so she said, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And in verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. She greeted her and gave her salutations. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, The baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. As as she came into the room, I'm going to see here that both ladies are going to be blessed. At the very presence of the Lord coming in the womb of Mary and greeting Elizabeth, John, her her son, John the Baptist, would leap in the womb. And she was like, man, there is life brewing in me. I remember when the babies over the years first started kicking. And it it freaked me out a little bit. I mean, I saw this, 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 this movement across the belly. You sure it's a baby? seen too many horror movies you know. it's a baby okay but it was a it was a, a blessing to see life and to know that life was being birthed coming forth and and not only for elizabeth but mary was encouraged and it says and She spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You know, i got to tell you, there are times that I need to hear that. And there are times you probably need to hear it too. When you're looking at your life and you're thinking, it's just, it's filled with trouble and chaos and, and what's going on and I don't understand you need an Elizabeth to step in and say, let me tell you something, you are highly blessed by God. And I know you can't see it right now, but I want you to know it's true. God has blessed you richly. He's given you his son. He's blessed you with his forgiveness. He's preparing a place for you for all eternity to be with him. You are truly rich and blessed by God. And I want to be the type of person that Elizabeth was in other people's life. And I like kind of hanging around the Elizabeths of the world to bring a blessing and encouragement. And so she encouraged her and said that she was blessed by God. She spoke out and said, Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And hence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded, or salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb. And blessed is she that believed, 
For there shall be a performance of those things which were told to her from the Lord. And look at, and Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord. And I thought, what great hope Mary carried. And how it helped her through the walk of life that was before her. The difficulties of the, the shame of, of bearing a child or being pregnant before the official wedding date. The, the hard times that she would face in, in knowing that her son would soon be taken, rejected, crucified. And yet it was a hope that was in her that carried her through. And you and I have that hope. If we open up our heart and accepted Christ as our Savior and know that he died for our sins, then the Bible says that he comes and he dwells inside us. And you and I carry a hope within us. A hope that's there not only for our life, but to encourage the life of others. When I was thinking of this, I thought there was another man that carried a hope, and his name is Simeon. If you look at chapter 2, verse 21. It begins this way in chapter 2, verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was to um, so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, the hope of Israel, for the Messiah to come. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it says, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. We don't know when that hope was given to him. But from Scripture and all indications, he was an older man. And he may have been carrying that hope for years. I'm going to see the Messiah. God's promised me that. And I can imagine the, the things that kind of transpired between the beginning of that understanding that God was going to reveal his son to him and the actual time when Jesus was there at the temple I can imagine the, the troubles and the trials and the things that he went through because we're men of like passion. We go through similar things. The same, adver you know, the, the, um, the same troubles that are upon us, our brothers also face them as well. They have the same afflictions that you and I go through. And yet this man continued to stay devote, devoted to God, faithful to God. I'm going to see the promise. It's going to happen. God told me. Oh, Simeon, you've been saying that for the last 20 years. I don't care. I'm going to see it. God's faithful in what he's declared. And so here he was given this promise of the Lord, and he came by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. And then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace 
according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. And he's saying, Lord, you came through. You did exactly what you said you were going to do. And he continued to be faithful to God through the whole time. And when I was thinking about that, I thought, how about if that day Simeon said, you know, I've been going to the temple for the last 75 years, and today I'm tired. I'm just going to skip today. I, I'm just going to skip it. I, I don't think I'll go today. You know, I'm having a hard week. I have so much going on. I got family coming in town. I just, what I think I'm going to do is I'll just take a week or two off. And I thought, wow, you would have missed what you've been waiting for. You may have missed the very promise that was given to you. But the scripture says he was a devout man. He was faithful in the faith. He continued to believe and persevere and go and attend and, and, and follow through. And I thought, Lord, how about if the very thing that I need is waiting for me, either at a Sunday fellowship or at a personal devotion time in my own home. And I think, you know, I'm just a little too tired. I, I just, I had a rough week. And yet, for whatever might unfold for me that day, that very word that I would have been in could have encouraged me, strengthened me. And many of you have experienced that, haven't you? Where the Bible reading that you read was so applicable for what you faced. But how about if it's like, I'm too tired. And God's like, the promise is inside. I know. Maybe tomorrow. And then you endure whatever you endure, and you're like, oh, I should have read this yesterday. And this is just uh, free thinking in the Scripture, but I can encourage you this, and this is the blessing. And this is the hope is that even in my weakness, the Scripture pointed out that and the Spirit was the one that revealed unto him. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And so, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, when I am weak, be strong in my life. Because I don't want to miss a thing. I don't want to miss your blessing. I don't want to miss the promise. I don't want to miss what I've been waiting for all my life. And so I come to you and ask, Lord, that your spirit would lead me and move me forward in the faith, even past my weaknesses, even overcoming all my weaknesses. And here Simeon came into the temple, and there he was. And I could imagine, you know, the joy on Simeon's face, you know. He was faithful. He was coming every week, coming every day to the temple all the time. And then all of a sudden, he comes by the Spirit, and he looks, and the Lord says, there's the one you've been waiting for. Now, I don't dance that well anymore. But would I do a jig like you'd never see? I would be like just jumping and leaping and just so excited. Probably throw my back out, you know, but by the Spirit, I could do it. And I'd just be rejoicing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you didn't let me miss what you had for me. And I've got hope. Because if it was up to me, I, I'd have missed it. I'd have been like, yeah, you know, well, there's a football game on. I'd rather do that. 
I'm so grateful it's not. And I have a hope of the Savior who lies within me that's going to be faithful to finish what he began in me and bring me through all things to the other side. You and I have that hope. Man, it's rich. Lord, thank you that you, no matter what happens, no matter what the enemy tries, who is he compared to the Lord? No matter what people do, man shall not prevail against me. And even what, who I am and my weakness, he knows my frame that I'm but dust. That because he sealed us with his Holy Spirit of promise, I'm not going to miss a thing. There are times it may take me longer to get to it, but I won't miss it because he remains faithful. And I saw that with Simeon. Thank you, Lord, that this man's been waiting. We don't know the time. We don't know how long. But however long it was, and again in verse 27, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. At the exact time when the parents brought in the child Jesus. At the exact time. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, you got to hope. I know the world's crazy. I know it's upside down. It's backwards. I know there's wickedness and evil that's surrounding us. But I know the Lord will finish what he began. He promised it. We have it in the word. Like Simeon had the promise of the Lord. And it was the Spirit that made sure he didn't miss it. I am so grateful for God's Spirit. There's another group of men that we'll close with. The Magi. The wise men. Not the wise guys. Certainly. But the, the wise men. I'm sorry. Kathy would be like, why'd you have to? I don't know, it just happens. Turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. And when Jesus was born of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. A king? A king? What do you mean a king? I'm the king, Herod would think. We can't have another king besides me. What would Rome say? What would happen to us? We can't have this king. This king would interrupt everything. It would distract everything that we want to do and accomplish. We can't have this king because our rule, our reign, our authority needs to continue. There are many in the world that don't want the king so that they can rule their own life. They can rule their cities, their states, and their governments. And they don't want the king. But these guys, they traveled far because they wanted the king. They had a hope in the king. They had a, 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 a faith in the Redeemer of Israel. Now, now, where could these guys have gotten that hope? More than likely through Daniel. Daniel shared that hope. Daniel expressed that hope. Daniel, in Daniel chapter 9, was given that hope by an angel. 
by Gabriel. Of the hope of the Messiah that would be a blessing to his people. He was given some details about that hope. And as Daniel, being a, a main leader within the kingdoms of the Medo-Persian Empire, of Darius the Mede and Cyrus the Persian, there'd be many travelers coming through that area. And Daniel, more than likely, shared that hope with others. And then from generation to generation, that hope was expounded upon, was thought upon, was embraced. And within whether what Daniel said or what the Holy Spirit showed them, that they would be a sign that they would see the rising of this new star that would guide and lead them. And these men live their life waiting to see that star. Just waiting and seeing the signs of the time and there it was, illuminated in the sky and they said, we must go. This is, this is something we've been holding on to. This is something we've been waiting for. This is a, 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 an understanding that we had from a child and we've been looking and looking and waiting and expecting and, and there it is. And then they traveled. They had very little to go on. They had the truth from Daniel that was presented and passed down from generation to generation. And they had a sign. A star in the sky. But it was clearly enough for them to make the journey. Clearly enough for them to travel the distance. Clearly enough to face whatever opposition they faced or would face because their heart was motivated. We want to worship him. And so they said, where is he? We don't even know where he's going to be born, but we saw a star. Where is he that is to be born king? And when he had gathered, in verse 4, all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, and demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea. And thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea, in Judah, thou shalt um, be least among the princes of Judah. For thou art, or out of thee shall come forth a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And when Herod had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently that what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring word again that I may come and worship him also. Herod wasn't going to worship him. Herod was going to kill him. He didn't want a king ruling over his life. He wanted to be king. And there are many when we travel that we're going to face that either outright reject who we're seeking, who we're waiting for, or they're going to be pretenders along the way. But our focus needs to be that's where we're going. I'm traveling to get to the feet of Jesus that I may worship him. And this is what they did. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, they should not return to Herod. They departed out of their country another way. 
And I saw these wise men. And I saw them with this hope. And they had very little to go on. They had the teachings of Daniel. And they had a sign, a star. And yet they were determined. I'm going to journey until I get to him. And I'm going to come and worship him. And I'm going to take my treasures. And I'm going to cast them at his feet. I am so grateful that the Lord came. I am so grateful that Jesus came and died for our sins and rose again. Has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Has given us the hope to live this life continually and with an expectation of his soon return. And I have a lot of scriptures that speak to it. They had what Daniel said. And I have many signs that I'm seeing unfold before my eyes with Israel becoming a nation, with the rise of wickedness and evil, with the things that God has declared would happen in these last days. And I want my eyes to continue to see Because my goal is the same. I can't wait to get to his feet and worship him. To get to the feet of Jesus and worship him. And then take all the treasure that he's allowed me to gain. The crowns, if you would. And cast them at his feet. And say, you are Lord. And Paul said, a crown is laid up for me. But not just for me only, but all those that love is appearing. And I encourage you as we're journeying with the Lord, as we're journeying to come before him, to to stand before him in heaven, he has given you great hope for the journey. And he's given you his Holy Spirit to journey with you. The Spirit of God who is your helper, your teacher, your strength, your guide, your wisdom, and of course your comforter. And you can trust in his spirit to get you home. I tell you, it's better than any GPS out there. They mess me up. Turn here, turn here. Recalculating. They've sent us on wild goose chases. But my Lord will send me before his throne. And I'll nail down and bow. And you know what else I have? And I'll close with this. What else you and I have that maybe they didn't? We have each other. We have the family of God. And when I'm getting a little discouraged, i got a brother, an Elizabeth, if you would, that's going to come alongside me. I've got a, a, you know, a Barnabas that's going to come and encourage me. I've got someone that's going to say, come on, Kirk, keep going. It's worth it. Let's keep going. One more step. I can't take another step. Yes, you can, because the Lord is with you. And I want to be that encourager to you. We've got the family of God. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for journeying with me. And I am more than happy to journey with you. Let's keep our eyes on where we're headed and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I say Merry Christmas. Father, thank you. For the time that you've given us, we rejoice in who you are and what you have in your faithfulness, because there are times that I, I'm not so faithful. But yet you remain faithful. And each one of us can hold those promises and declare them to be true and amen. Because our God is the one who will fulfill them. So thank you for the hope that, that lies within us. And may we spread that hope. And those tidings of great joy, may we spread those to the world around us. 
But here, now, and on into eternity, we worship you and praise your holy name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.